Hey, hi, hello, and welcome back to Ingenuity. Today we're taking care of that trans cross member. It's going to be a good one. Let's get to it. Let's go! Alright, so now that we got those welded up, um, next step is to put the engine and trans together, get those uh, in the car, and see where we need to put the uh, rear trans cross member. Once that's in, then we can do all our finished welding, get everything tied together, and uh, keep rolling. Let's do it. thought if I angled it enough I could sneak it up in you know kind of like like that but that didn't happen um, but it's supporting itself I've got a jack under the front um, to keep the snout of it up because it is unbalanced I'll show you what I'm doing here there it is all right, so I'm gonna go uh, wrestle the transmission in here. Um, give it a shot and see what we can make happen. <laughs> Time for a little show and tell before the, <laughs> before the battery dies. It's really cold out here. Kind of sucking the batteries left out. So anyway, here we go. So the transmission is not exactly where it needs to be. But it is level, so this gives us a rough depth idea. So what I'm gonna do is measure that distance, which is so the mid, the distance or the depth we're gonna measure is the difference between here and the frame out. Well, the frame out because the the really good news is that it really doesn't stick too fast far here, and honestly, once we close that gap up between the bell housings it's probably going to be flush or even a little bit farther forward i know it's dumb we don't have the suspension this thing's not running we still haven't figured out how we're going to get the trans to ship right but i mean just seeing that i mean what a hell of a step forward <laughs> so um so with that i'm going to get everything supported real quick we're going to uh, clean everything up and uh, let the battery recharge and then we'll be back at it in a little bit. So, see you in a bit. <clears throat> All right, and we are back. So, um, blasted the trans mount off. Um, got it right here. Um, basically, plan of attack is I have this quarter inch plate. I'm gonna cut a plate um, that's gonna go on the trans mount, uh, bolt down, and then we're gonna use the um, I have some one inch tube, I mean obviously not this piece, but um, one inch tube on either side, two tubes um, going underneath the plate to each chassis rail. We'll get that welded, um, we'll, get, we'll get that put together, get it on the transmission, get the transmission leveled, and then we'll figure out um, what kind of spacing we need to get it um, on, the, uh, on the frames. So, here we go.
so I'm thinking about some different ideas with this cross member and like what we can do with it. Um, and I think I came up with a decision. So I was thinking, you know, for sake of ease, you know, can we come straight out and then just have like a drop bracket, um, make that out of like plate, you know, triangulate it, you know, try to give it a little bit of an industrial look. But I keep coming back to this idea of, um, and obviously, you know, I can't bend them, but I can, you know, cut relief and then bend them. Um, so it kind of looked like that. Um, obviously, <laughs> that's not a, a perfect angle, um, but just for, you know, it holds the tube still for demonstration purposes. I think having the tubes come down like that uh, would just be more aesthetically pleasing. Um, I don't think, I don't foresee any strength difference between this versus another way um, outside of like gusseting the crap out of things. So basically rough idea. It's not going to come up like this. It's going to be more like uh, like that. Uh, both tubes will do that and then when they terminate right here at the <coughs> when they terminate on the bottom of this um, they're going to terminate into a plate and the plate is going to weld on um, they're going to weld to the plate and then the plate will bolt through uh, with two bolts um, to the uh, to the frame rail with the idea you know again that everything is serviceable um, so you know if we're at the track and the scene needs to come out the idea is that we literally unbolt the tops of the struts on both the, the subframes, um, you know, we're going to run quick disconnects on it, pretty on as many of the fluid lines as we can, um, so you can pop everything out, drop the whole thing in a, in a matter of minutes. So um, that's the idea, anyway. Whether or not we do it, I don't know, but that's our goal. So uh, yeah, I'm going to get to working on this. That, you know, with the, with the transmount, I wanted to keep it simple to keep progress going. Um, you know, and then something we could always go back later to, you know, reconfigure, make it a little bit, you know, prettier. But I, I really like this look. I might just roll with that for a bit. Um, I can also get the aftermarket uh, factory transmount, which is another reason I did this the way that I did. So that way, we can use, um, you know, aftermarket alternatives to factory parts. We're not making everything bespoke. Um, just all the stuff that mounts to the chassis, you know, so it's really not that bad. Um, but yeah, so the way these are right now, um, I'm going to cut these um, and then get them to go farther up. Probably have to cut the release a little bit deeper, but um, use some 2H uh, L channel. Basically, weld these bars to the sides of the bracket like that, and then this will sit. Um, Against the against the frame rail like that, with these bolts uh, going going up through. So, so uh, unfortunately, the well, I think this is a good idea. It's the only piece of L channel I have uh, that's big enough. So, and it's not long enough. So, um, I'll have to go out and get some. I need to get the tubing for the front of the car anyway. So it's not that big a deal. And on that note, I'm gonna end it here. Thank you so much, you guys, for sticking around. I really do appreciate it. Just remember, on stuff like this, sometimes all you need is a little bit of engineering. I will see you next time.